So, so James, um, first question is, after 40 years uh, having played with B.B. King, uh, do you feel this is the right time for you to start your career as a solo artist? Well, I actually uh, started uh, my uh, solo career uh, before B.B. Uh, stopped playing, before he passed away. I actually started it probably in about nine, in uh, 2005. And I did uh, recorded my uh, first CD. I had recorded um, some records before that, like when I was 17 years old, I recorded two, about three records then. So, um, yes, it's the, it's the right time to do it now. Well, what, what feeling did you have at the time when you decided to start playing by yourself? I mean, B.B. was still alive, but he wasn't playing maybe as much, and you decided to launch your career. My original uh, plans, uh, I started uh, playing when I was 12, and uh, about 13, I decided this is what I wanted to do professionally. So my plans were from the time I was 13 to actually be a solo artist. So it was nothing new. There was no new plan. There was no new decision. It was just uh, the right time to start doing it. So what legacy do you think uh, you have from B.B.? What, what, what do you think that he left uh, in you? Uh, the, the love of the blues and uh, the love to uh, share it with all the world. And um, learning from him the, the way, the proper way to deal with the people, deal with the audience, and deal even with the media, you know? And um, being able to just to share, share the music and keep it alive. So when you look at sort of the global blues scene, and of course it's grown and it's, uh, it's not in the South anymore, it's a very international thing, it's in all languages and everything. How do you see the global blues scene? And, and what sensation do you get from that? Well, I see, I see it even growing even more. I see the enthusiasm of the people and the audiences getting larger and larger, the musicians getting better uh, at playing the blues, and they have a greater desire to play it. What do you know about the Argentine blues scene, and have you paid attention uh, recently? Are there any artists that you recall? I don't know of any recent artists, but I, I, I remember spending time with Papo. Right. And uh, Papo uh, playing a few times with BB, even in the United States and here in Argentina, and uh, having a good time with him. He loved life. He loved the music. It was, music was his life. And uh, he, he, he devoted a lot of energy towards uh, Playing the blues, right, and, uh, and 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 uh, letting the people hear the blues from him. So, uh, are there any particular characteristics that you think are what differentiate a good trumpet player from a brilliant trumpet player? Is, is there any specific thing that you think uh, is what gives it that different sensation, a different way of? Well, uh, uh, I don't consider myself a brilliant trumpet player, so. <laughs> but you, you can did. listen to the good I, ones. I, I hear the, the, the and brilliant guys, great, so and, the, and the things that they uh, uh, portray in their music is an efficiency and a love and, and uh, a desire. A lot of good tone, a lot of good ideas. They uh, are able to um, create, and that's the difference between. Uh, the brilliant musicians, their creativity level is higher than, say, just the average person like me. <laughs> well, I think you're a lot more than average now, but who would you consider a brilliant blues trumpet player? There aren't, there aren't many. I'm the, probably the only blues trumpet player around. I don't, I don't really know of any. Me, me most, of, most of the, the guys that uh, 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 play blues play guitar, you know, uh, uh, keyboards or something like that, and, you know, you might find a sax player from uh, a saxophone player from time to time who, who plays blues. But so outside of blues, who do you look for to, for inspiration? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a, a jazz player. I'm also a, a soul and R&B player. So uh, um, you're a Miles type of guy. Yeah, yep. I, I, Miles and Freddie Hubbard. And, uh, Dizzy Gillespie, Dizzy. You know? mm -hmm. uh, Lee Morgan, so uh, trumpet players like that, and they're basically, they, they, Clark Terry, they all play blues within the jazz idiom, so uh, I, I can draw from that. Right, so now going to you as a, as a trumpet player in the show that we're coming up, which I know is going to be amazing, so don't, try to, <laughs> don't, don't be humble here, that's cool. Um, what, what can we expect first in terms of the kind of material that we're going to hear and then the, the type of show that we could expect? Okay, you're gonna you're gonna get the type of material you're gonna hear. You're gonna hear some of BB King's uh, uh, songs, 
but performed in a way that I performed them because I could never perform them like he does. And uh, you're going to hear a mixture of uh, jazz, a little R&B, and uh, a, a little soul within the blues, you know. Um, uh, a little bit of a, the traditional thing. I've, I've written one song that I consider traditional. Uh, maybe others may not, but uh, I think it's a traditional type of blues. And uh, uh, performance-wise, you're going to get a person uh, who's going to be very, very energetic. <laughs> so you've been here before, several mm -hmm. occasions with BB, and you know, you see a lot of bands that come to Argentina and they'll record their albums here, their live albums or their videos and stuff. What particular things do you remember and what's your, your feeling about the, the Argentine crowd and, and how, you know, what energy do you get from them? Well, I, the energy that I get from the Argentine cro uh, crowd is uh, the love of the blues and they're, they're enthusiastic, they're, they get with you, they, uh, they, they, they listen to you, they sing with you, they give you a feeling back, you know, like you give a feeling out and then you receive that feeling back from them. So. Um, that's, that's, that's what I get from them, you know. The, the crowds and the bands here are fantastic, you know. Um, what's your take on the way Papo felt the blues? Because, of course, you don't interpret the blues. you got to feel the blues. Right, right. And, you know, given that he's, uh, he's not from, you know, the south of the United States or he wasn't brought up in that culture, how, how do you think uh, he managed to feel the blues? Like, well, how well you it, it? The, uh, with the, the music and playing, uh, the feeling all you're playing is life. Life is the same. I don't care where you are. You, you have your ups, you have your downs, you have your happiness, you know. You have times when, you, when, when you're very sad, uh, things may not go very, very well for you. And so you draw on everything that you lived. So Papo, Papo could channel the blues feeling from here. And, yes. And you saw it in his music. Yes, 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 yes. Right. He could. He could channel on, uh, from the everyday life, you know. Uh, uh, the, just everything that goes on each day in your life, you know, and that's what he did. Do you remember any particular anecdotes, maybe, uh, in some of the times you guys played together or, or hung out that, you know, maybe about his style of playing or about the way he was like? The, 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 the way he was like, he was very happy. And, uh, uh, um, and like I said, he enjoyed life, you know, and he lived it to the, to the fullest every moment. <laughs> I mean, every moment of it. And you enjoy being around him. You enjoy the, his enthusiasm about everything. And uh, when he played the slow blues and had the drawback on something that uh, maybe some pain that happened in, the, in his life, uh, he could do that also. There is a, there's a story that's told here that when Papo first went to meet BB, he brought him a big chunk of cheese. <laughs> yes. And that that's why uh, then BB called him. Uh, Mr. Cheese. Yes. So, c can you tell us uh, if this is true and and, and uh, if indeed he was called Mr. Cheese or, or anything else about this? As far as I know of, uh, I guess BB did call him call him call him that, but uh, I don't really remember that I wasn't privy to that information. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he did bring him a, a chunk of cheese, but uh, the person who would have known that uh, has passed away now, that would be Norman Matthews. He was BB's uh, personal uh, assistant. So he, he received all the gifts for BB and all that. And that would be at a time that I would not have seen it. I'd been somewhere else dealing with the band and making sure the band was ready to, to perform. Well, we're going to track him down, but what, do, do you recall any very uh, bizarre gifts? Is there anything that comes to mind that was weird? Or what was the most common gift you get? A guitar? Uh, a lot of pictures. Pictures? Yeah. A lot of people were, were, were artists, and, and uh, they would draw a lot of different pictures, and they would present them to BB, and, and BB would accept them whether they were good or bad. He, he never found anything that was bad. I'm sure. No, no he never. He, he, uh, his uh, outlook on uh, uh, everyone and things that happened was that everyone has something good to offer, offer yeah. always. And that's the way he looked at everyone. And my last question is, did he particularly like cheese? Yes. He, as a matter of <laughs> fact, he did. He had, he had cheese in his dressing room every night. <laughs>